So if you saw our technology segment on This Week in Agribusiness, Greg and I, in less than two minutes, had to share some neat stuff about 360 Rain, and I wanted to kind of get a little more feedback from Greg because I think everybody's seen rain at farm shows the last half a dozen years. Well, now you got the production model. Greg, you said you got 120 of these running around the world. Obviously, you're going to have a ton more next year. You can run it all from your phone. It works. It works in different crops. Talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, I think, you know, we had to get to the point where it become, no matter what crop you and I plant, obviously we're running on soybeans and corn and we're running now on onions. And so we're running a wide range of crops. But as you watch this machine behind me, it just literally thinks for itself. So we're standing right here in the center of this 101 acre cornfield and it's now turning. So it runs on a center, what we call the backbone. So it's already done everything to the east side of me. Now it's thinking for itself. It's gonna come and turn and it's gonna run west. And so we're carrying, what, 3,000 feet of hose? So this machine can cover well over 200 acres when the fields are designed correctly. So what it's doing is following the planter pass. Where the planter went here is exactly what we're following. So it's seeking, it's coming, you can see, and it's turning, and you can see the drops. It's gonna turn right in to the row. So the water's off right now. We're not watering in the backbone until we get to the far end of the field. Then when it backs all the way up to the well, we put the 3,500 inches of water on. So Greg, so a lot of people might be unfamiliar with this. When it makes its first pass down through the field, it's only applying on the large boom, not in the middle. So we're not right. muddying up the hose. We're not that tracking up your field. And one thing a lot of people might not know, you can tell by this corn, which by the way, Greg, I'll have to tell Aaron, good job. This corn looks amazing, but you've had this running since V4, V5 all the time. Right, that is yeah. correct. So, yeah. so as it gets in here, these seven drops on the outside are gonna start running. Let's walk up here. So you'll see it find a spot. And if one thing too, and we'll put some screenshots in here to show you, this can all be operated from your phone. Greg was showing me earlier, it was pretty neat. So this is what the backbone looks like where the machine runs. Right. I get that question all the time. How much corn does it run down? Well, very little. Very you little. Know, very little. There is, there is definitely a path here, but you're gonna see the nozzles turn on here. The machine will hesitate. The well will start. And as soon as it senses pressure, it'll go. And Greg, you're saying you're putting on how much again? Three tenths here? About 3,500. And Three. then you're also doing nitrogen, correct? So we got nitrogen, right. So now the machine stopped. It's gonna start building pressure. The well is started now, and we're gonna be off and running. So the biggest thing for this, if you haven't seen it, and I, I'm stealing Greg's line, but you're just putting the water in the sweet spot. You're not wasting water. Greg and I were up talking about, because he's got pivots and other operations too, and Greg, the efficiency of this is definitely worth noting. Well, the goal was at the beginning on the whiteboard, Chad, could we raise more corn with 40% less water? Now that's a pretty broad reach to say, well, 40% less should raise more. The exciting thing is last year in our trials, 30% less water, raised 18 bushel more. Yeah, that's incredible. But great. look where we got the water here. Yeah. We talk about right around the root system. And so you can see this water will eventually, it takes about three minutes for this water to totally disappear. So wow. right now in this water, we have nitrogen and ammonia sulfate. This corn plant here is a very happy corn plant. Oh my gosh. Well, you can tell by looking at it. Greg, you got your phone in your pocket? I do. Turn the app on here. We'll see if we can show everyone. I think the other thing that anytime you've got new technology, it can be a little scary. And the good part is, is the connectivity of this. You, you have so, it. That's really so good. Let me spin we're around. on the blue dot yeah. where we're standing, and it's heading west now. And this is pretty interesting, guys. So you've got, you got speed, you've got RPM, how much fuel's in the machine. You've got we'll what see, you're putting on, we correct? We can see right? the whole yeah. field there. Yeah. You can see right now we're applying 0.36, it's just a touch over 0.35. We're looking here for nitrogen. Wow. So if I move it up this here, we can see exactly we're looking for, you know, how much are we actually putting on of nitrogen? Let me turn my phone around so I yeah. can read it. 
You can't read upside down, so, Greg. Come on. My goal is to put on 14 gallon to the acre. And right now it's running about 15, 14.4, 13. So it averages right at 14. And talk about the well that you have supplying these. What are so the now, well requirements? The well's a lot less. I wanted 250 gallon a minute yeah. on the well. We actually ended up with a really good well. He's got it right at 300 wow. gallon per minute, but it's only an eight inch casing. It's basically a residential well. Wow. So a 30 horsepower motor in that well builds more than enough pressure. If you look here at my pressure, it should tell exactly what our well pressure is at any given moment. And I got it at 132, 130 PSI. That's what it takes to get through the 3,000 yeah, feet of right. three inch hose. So let's back up a second. If you're watching this video and you're thinking this is interesting, give the elevator speech about how many acres one machine can do. You know, some of the basics that when guys start thinking about, hey, listen, maybe instead of upgrading our four-year-old combine, Greg, maybe maybe we ought to try something different to go find us 50 bushel a different way to get to mom's new kitchen cabinets. Come on, Greg, that's always that's always the truth, right? It is, it's is, important. That's there, it's important, there you go. That's but right. the truth is, is there is some limitations, and you and I were talking about that. What does one machine really cover with 3,000 feet of hose and so forth? Right. Well, the reason we got 3,000 feet of hose, we're working a 30-inch row. Right. So that reel that you see there is 26 inches wide. Yeah. Okay. And so the max we can get on that is 3 inches, okay. of, or 3,000 feet of 3 inch. But by design, I want it to be able to do up to 200 acres, depending upon field shape. If it's a perfect rectangle, I'm doing 230 in one of my fields, but it wow. just ended up being the perfect shape. Okay. But no matter what the shape of your field is, you saw this field, yeah, it's this, not pivot friendly. No, not It's at got all. some really long leg. I'll spin the camera rows. around and, and I don't know how well you could see it. You can see the river there, over yeah, there. Yeah, there's a river and, there, and a, there's not a straight, well, I guess you got a little bit of a straight side up there, yeah. but this field is a great example of where a pivot wouldn't work. So pretty easy to get 160 to 180 acres you know, and uh, of course we do multiple crops. A lot of dairies will do 80 acres of alfalfa tomorrow, and then we'll get the alfalfa done. We're right back into 100 acres of corn, silage corn. So it's from A to Z. The beauty for me though is it puts me in control. Yeah. I'm a control freak. I want to manage <laughs> what's happening today. Yeah. How to feed this plant? What? How do I relieve stress? You know, as you look down here, you know, this this is a happy corn plant. Oh my gosh. This corn has not rolled in here no. since we started, even of seven 90 degree days. Wow. I think the hottest day so far has been 97. So we can manage all the variables. I can change the speed. If you say, well, Greg, I want to give a half inch or three quarters of an inch. Right. I wouldn't do that personally because water starts to run. Move, yeah. As the hillsides. Yeah. So the three tenths, the 35 hundredths, the four tenths is kind of the sweet spot for So us. the other big thing you and I were talking earlier is livestock producers are in love oh. with rain because of manure management and all the new regulations and all the stuff around that. So we got two clients. We got yeah. the organic farmer <laughs> that's got the hog building yeah. and he's able to put the pump right down in the manure and we mix water and manure and we put four applications of the hog manure on right at the base of the plant right. in organic cornfield. Last year, that gentleman had 270 bushel corn. And at a, the price he was selling, I was jealous. <laughs> I, I was happy for him. The other, other client is commercial corn, right. but he has a lot of lagoons and a lot of dairy pits, and he's got to manage manure. I myself use a drag line for hog buildings in our dairy, and it's expensive. Yeah. And if we can put it on in the growing crop, to me environmentally, that is a sweet spot. Well, and less compaction, and there's a less whole compaction, Greg, there's a whole laundry list. Utilizing that nitrogen and that manure when we're growing the crop to me is the golden ticket. Wow. That's what we're looking at. So, so we introduce it at the well site. Yeah. We put the manure in the water stream, and of course, we're looking at the future. Right now, we're sure. introducing cover crop seeds in the water stream, and it looks like it's progressing very well. So, so look at the future, Greg. You've done really good here the last, I would say, you know, five or six years, you and your team bringing this thing to a production level. If you and I are standing back in this field and it's very possible we will be four or five years from now, what are you thinking? Some remote sensing maybe on? Some oh, real, definitely. Yeah, what, what else are you well, thinking? Well, this machine is going to be a plant butler. Whatever right. this corn plant wants, 
it's going to deliver today. Mm -hmm. It's going to know if there's any disease. It's going to know if there's any stress. Right. If we got disease, insects, you know, how much nitrogen's in this plant at this given moment. All those things are the future. Right. I envision where we would know and name every corn plant. And we would know exactly if we have a really, really small late emerger, why not take him out? Yeah. He's just going to rob. He's not going to put an ear on. Right. Once they're one, you know, we get one collar behind, he just becomes a weed. Well, it was like so, you and I were talking. I think part of it is, is, you know, we, you and I were talking about the price of land. And when you start talking about land prices in the teens or in the 20s, thousands of dollars, of course, right. it, it makes a lot of sense to, in a lot of cases, to not buy, to not buy that farm and take the farm ground you have and let's find the extra 50 bushel. It's not about farming no. more acres. It's about doing what? Taking care of what you got a little That's better, right. Greg? Is so that... let's invest $1,200 an acre yeah. for the future. And for the next 10 to 30 years, we just continue to take this farm higher and higher in production, you know. So and I so... want to go I want to go down one other path with you because there was a little a little fun with it. You were talking about a bunch of the startups. Can you kind of walk through that a little bit? If this is something you decide to do, you see it in the show, you sign the order, you buy one and all of a start all of a sudden you get your well dug and the machine comes, Greg. Talk a little bit about how that connectivity sure. in your phone, right. how it, how you ease that pressure whether you're watching this video and Texas or you're in Iowa or you're in the Ukraine because you have machines in all those places. Talk about how your team is able to assist the grower. You mentioned it's got cameras. Right. But but talk a little bit about that because I don't think a lot of people know that. Well, the first thing you're going to do, it comes with everything you need. It comes with all the electrical boxes, all the base station, the planter tower that has the GPS RTK receivers on it. So it starts centering that tower on the planter. And as you plant this field, just like we did, now we've created a path exactly where the rain unit's gonna run. And so we then, as 360, generate that completed path to you. We upload it onto the cloud. The machine pulls it down immediately and you're off to the races. But we like to have about an hour with you on startup just to massage all the values. We're talking about how we manage the hose, you know, how the reel is stacking the hose on, you know, is the machine dead nuts in the center? All those values of how fast the steering's moving, all that we can control. After we spend about an hour, an hour and a half with you, it just runs. You know, the thing I find really interesting, Greg, and you certainly appreciate this, is technology like this is truly amazing. But in all honesty, it wasn't really practical five years ago because we didn't have things like Starlink. So right. if you're in the middle of nowhere and you don't have internet, then you're going to have some challenges with 360 rain. That's not the case today. And I think there's a lot of that forward technology now that's an enabling things like 360 to actually work and have the connectivity so that the user experience gets you home for supper, right? right. Am I saying that right, Greg? Well, absolutely. So the base needs to be within two miles of the field. We got that kind of conductivity. So if we look way over by yeah, the green I'll shed. I'll zoom in up there, Greg, go ahead. By the white, you see the green yeah. fertilizer tank by the electric pole, that's our base. So it's broadcasting back and forth. At the same time, our team in Morton, Illinois, we have the ability to watch everything in this machine and we can help you with any kind of difficulty that you're having. So software, mechanic, whether it's hardware, we have a lot of capability and we're on top of it with you. And we're just making sure that your life, you know, I run pivots for a living. <laughs> and we call it the irritation season instead of irrigation. Greg, that's terrible. Uh, I'm going to well, delete that. No, I'm uh, actually, I'm going to leave that in. Greg. Well, <laughs> I understand all the things that can happen. And so I'm pretty passionate that this machine, since it started, I'll just tell you, maybe I'm lucky, but it hasn't stopped. This one. Yeah. This particular field, it's just run nonstop back and forth. Wow. And as soon as I cover this whole field, I start over. At stage one again. So my goal is to run that for 10 continuous weeks. And so we're going to add about, what, almost five inches of water through the growing season. Now, we'll shut off if the good Lord blesses us of a yeah. rain. And you and I better hope it rains some. Yeah, that's right. You know, we definitely need across the Corn Belt some good rains. So as you watch it here, though, this is how simple it gets. It totally thinks for itself, and it just keeps moving its way across the field. Wow. Well, Greg, for more information, I noticed you guys have some 
some things online where if you want to get one of your field mapped, I played with that a little bit. Yes. You've got you've got some things online. Explain to people where they go to learn more. Certainly there's a dealer network and an expanding dealer network for 360. Absolutely. Explain to people what they what's their step. If you find this, whatever this is, 15 minutes interesting and you want to learn more about it, Greg, what's the next steps? Go right on to 360rain.com. Go right in and just pick one of your fields. Very easy to do. Just take your finger and map it, send it into us. We will give you a field design back and we'll say, you know, Bill Smith in Iowa, we can do 92 acres of your 92 and a half acre field. And we'd show you exactly how it looks around the trees, sure. around the lake. And we'd show you exactly, we will respond back to you of a video and show you exactly and talk you through it. Next step is then you correspond back to us. We get you a dealer, we get you a price. And we start talking about what does it look like in the spring of 25, making sure you can get a cornfield that looks like this. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you, I've been fortunate enough to travel here the last two or three weeks, and you can see this field of corn is not longing for anything, Greg. It is a, what do you, do you say that? It's a half, it's a happy corn plant? Is yeah. that what you call it? Yeah, we like this, a really happy corn This plant. is a really happy corn. Actually, I think this is a spoiled <laughs> corn plant, Greg. I think that's what this is called. Well, Greg, thank you so much. It's been fun. I remember you and I in the shop and you showing me stuff probably four or five years ago that I couldn't repeat. And it's come a long way, Greg. So well. thank you very much. You got a heck of a team that's put a lot of time, had a lot of bumps and bruises along the way, but you got something here to really be proud of. Well, thanks, Chad. It's really good having you out today to see it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. If you got questions, you know how to find them. Thanks, guys. <laughs>